Podcast. Hello and welcome to Tech with NK. In today's video, we're going to solve the exercise Four Gauge from CS50's Introduction to Programming with Python, Problem Set 3. So in this exercise, what we're expected to do is to create a Python file, we we'll call it world.py, and in this file, we implement a program that prompts the user for a fraction formatted as x and y as you see here x and y are supposed to be integers and our code is supposed to output a percentage rounded to the nearest integer so what does that look like if the user enters something like three and four then we're supposed to output the percentage of four left 75 percent and we have a few conditions to check the first if the users or if the percentage is one percent or less we're supposed to output e for like empty tank if the percent is 99 or more we're supposed to output f that's full tank and if user enters zero in the space of y for example one divided by zero we're supposed to catch an error that's zero division error and we prompt the user to enter something else that's instead prompt the user again as you seen here and if the user enters something that's not of value that's not an integer let's say cat divided by doc like in this example here what we're supposed to do is prompt the user again so we just return fraction and then the user should enter something that's correct before we, give, we return the percentage so if you look at these examples here you see that cat and dog will prompt the user one on four 25 percent one on two 50 percent so according to the question why must not be four so if you look at the checks you see that there are times where the code even checks like fraction one on 50 and that's perfectly fine because y must not be four but one other condition that we must also check is that x is not greater than y so if we do a rundown of all the conditions that we need to check the first is we need to check if x is not greater than y that if the numerator is not greater than the denominator we need to check if the percentage of the fuel is greater than 99 then we'll output f we need to check if the percentage is less than one or is one or less than one 99 or less or greater than 99 and we also need to check for zero division errors and value errors so i'm just going to go ahead to vs code to show you how to do this and at the end of the video i'm going to explain my code step by step to make sure everything is clear okay in vs code i'll start by creating a new directory using the make their command i'm going to call it fuel and a directory has been created for us if i clear this then i'm going to cd into that directory that's to, oh cd fuel rather to change directories then i'm going to create the python file fuel.py and our file has been created for us i'm going to clear this then i'll close the terminal to give us a bigger space to work to start with this program, I'm going to create two variables. The first variable, I'll call it full tank. And I'm going to save the value 99 to this variable. Then I'll create a second variable, empty tank. Empty tank. And I'll assign it the value 1. I'm creating my variables with uppercase because that's like the Python way of creating constants. Because according to our code, these variables should not change. That's 99 and 1. When we look at the exercise, we realize that the code is supposed to run continuously until the user's input is correct. And to make our code to keep repeating itself, we are going to use a loop. I'm going to use a while loop for this, and I'm just going to say while true. Then we are going to write our code in a try block. So I'll start by writing the try statement here. I'm going to write a comment here to get input from the user. Okay. I just like writing comments since it's good practice. Then I'm going to save my input in two variables. I'll call the norm for numerator and den then for denominator. I'm going to use the input function or pass a string to it or say fraction. Then I'm going to format this or I'm going to split this using the split command. And I'm splitting it with a backslash. This is because if we look at the exercise or if we look at the sample input from the user, the user will enter something like, I don't know, let's say three on four. And so what is the split function going to do? It's going to look at this string and it's going to split the string at the point where there's a backslash. 
and this is going to return a list containing three and four. So I'm going to remove this and we'll keep writing our code. So now that I have my numerator and denominator in those two variables, I'm going to perform my first check. That's or check if the numerator numerator is greater rather greater than denominator. Okay. And to do this check, or just use a simple if else statement, or say if int of numerator is greater than the int of denominator, what am I going to do? I'm going to use a special keyword here, keyword continue. So in this if statement, what am I doing? I'm comparing the, my numerator and my denominator. I'm converting them to integers because if you remember, the function input is going to convert them to strings or it's going to get the input from the user as a string. So here, numerator and denominator are still strings. I need to convert them to integers. In the case where the numerator is actually greater than the denominator, say 5 divided by 4, when we get into this loop, we're going to continue. The keyword continue actually means to just restart the loop. So instead of going down to see probably what is after this if statement, which is what we're going to see very soon, this with the keyword continue here we're going to restart this loop so go back up here to the point input and this makes continue just the right keyword for example or for this exercise that done we're just going to calculate the percentage of fuel left so percentage of fuel sorry fuel calculate the percentage or start by creating a variable to save that then i'm going to use integer of numerator divided by integer of denominator star 100 then after having done this we're going to round this we we'll use the round keyword or the round function rather we're going to round our output so that the output is going to be an integer because we don't want it as a flow and with the value of the foil we're going to perform a few checks start by checking if the foil is greater than or equals to the full tank if so we're going to print uppercase f for full here we'll use an elif to check if the foil is greater or rather less than or equal to empty tank if so we're going to print uppercase e for empty and if the value of the foil is not greater than 99 or less than one we're just going to print this value as a percentage so we're going to say print or use an f string well percentage and if this try block succeeds what do we need to do we're going to break out of this loop i think this code is good enough for the try block so what about the except remember that we need to check two errors the zero division error or a value error so if i move out of this and i create my except block i'll say except start by putting the zero division error or value error what do we do we're going to continue remember what i said about the keyword continue it's just going to go back to the top of the loop prompting the user again to enter a fraction i think this is just good enough for the implementation of this code or go ahead and save this file or open back my terminal and i'm going to try and run this or say python file.py run that and we've been prompted to enter a fraction just like we expected or enter something correct to start with and then we have 75 percent let's try this again let's enter something wrong this time around and see the way the code is going to work let's say 5 divided by 4 we've been prompted to enter a fraction again which is what we expected if i enter something wrong again let's say dog divided by cat we've been prompted to enter the code again now if I enter something that will result to like 99%, let's say 99 divided by 100, and there we have a full tank. And so we see our code works just fine. But before we separate, I'm just going to try to explain this code again, line by line, to show you how the code works, and probably give you a better understanding of this exercise. I'll close this terminal again. Starting with the while loop. We're using the while true because we just want our code to keep running continuously until we choose to stop it or to break out of it when we use the break keyword. We're using the try block here because 
that's what has been required from us in the exercise. We're using the input function here to get input from the user, passing a variable to it as fraction, and we're using the split keyword to split the user's input. So if I give a little bit of space here, let's take a sample input from the user, let's say 3 divided by 4. So assuming the user enters something like this, 3 divided by 4, we'll come here and we're going to do our first check. We're checking if int of numerator, that's the numerator, is greater than the denominator. In this case, 3 is not greater than 4, so we're going to skip this step. But if 3 was actually greater than 4, this was going to just continue and so prompt the user again to enter a fraction. Coming to this line of the code, that's line 12. We're trying to calculate the percentage of the foil that is available from the user's input. And what are we doing? We're doing the actual mathematical operation that's numerator 3 divided by 4, the denominator, and then we multiply it by 100. And this should actually give us 75. And at this point, the variable foil contains the value 75. Now, if we come to these if else statements, what are we checking? If well, that's if 75 is greater than or equals to full time, that's 99, print F. This is not the case, so we're going to skip. We're going ahead. If well is less than or equal to empty tank, that's if 75 is less than or equal to 1. This is false, so we'll skip this again. Else, print the value of the fuel as a percentage. So else, we're printing 75%. And if a user entered a value that could cause a zero division error or a value error. Say the user entered something like, uh, let's say one divided by zero, our code is going to catch the error at this point and continue. So go back to the top and ask the user to enter a fraction. Or if it catches a value error, for example, dog divided by cat, our code is going to identify it at this line with the value error and then continue. Going back to the top, prompting the user for a fraction. I think this is a good enough explanation for this video and at this point I think everything is clear enough for everybody. Thank you for following up to the end of this video. If you liked it, do well to hit the like and subscribe buttons to support the channel. That said, have a good day.